So I wanted to talk about vigilance and mold sensitivity, uh, super toxin sensitivity, chemical sensitivity, etc. I'm trying to figure out how a way to make this really elegant. I think it's in, it's very important. And you might notice that my videos kind of pendulum swing between my prioritization of uh, either detox, um, the seeking of clean air, and balancing the nervous system. But I think my understanding that being nervous system, balancing uh, limbic system, calming forward is the most important thing you can do. A good test for people who are doing mold avoidance and I'm not, in, I'm not denying that no, mold avoidance is, even extreme mold avoidance might be very necessary for people, especially when they're at the tippy top of trauma toxicity, the trauma, the trauma toxicity ladder, which involves a ratcheting down of both toxicity and trauma, toxicity and trauma. And it might work, you know, it, it, it works in that way. It's kind of like for me, you know, for me specifically, it was like uh, getting kicked out of my house. Okay, that's kind of like a detox, right? Then zeolite, then eating a specific diet, then working on brain retraining. And all of it works synergistically to bring you down the ladder. But it's important to have these conversations because if you're doing extreme mold avoidance and you're, you have a prolonged relationship with that process, you're kind of choosing one avenue and that may that might be totally necessary for people but i think there's a very important thing to tune into in terms of if you're a person who needs to be focusing on brain retraining if brain retraining is harmful for you in some way there are other things to do to just become less vigilant and also consider that when we move down this ladder we sometimes use different kind of pacifiers so think about someone who for example is like coming off of heroin and you know chain smoke cigarettes to be able to tolerate that experience um or might even use like uh, i think methadone is a heroin like pharmaceutical but might use methadone to buffer themselves while they're coming off of the heroin and then then eventually has to taper off the methadone and then might start ch chain smoking cigarettes and then might start kind of like mm, um, kind of gorging on sugary food, etc. So the it's it's almost like finding a less threatening drug of choice as you're going down, as you're going down the uh, the ladder of addiction. That that's addiction, but we're sort of going down a similar ladder. And along the way, we find different pacifiers. A huge one, obviously, is the internet, which I believe is really damning in a way, especially in the modern world, and is definitely contributing to these illnesses because the internet gives this sort of it can be really helpful and if you limit it and use it properly it can be fine but when you're very limbic system forward we tend to use the internet as our kind of limbic system playground where we're like going down every rabbit hole and studying everything we're interested in and looking up every drama that you know titillates our limbic system and um, we're on overdrive trying to like figure out how to you know be uh, functional and, and um, employable and make money and it's just it's almost like a playground for too much choice in a vigilant state in the brain so I want to throw this out there for people who are curious about extreme mold avoidance and who are studying these two things because I am I think a very good sign not that you need to do specifically brain retraining or like you know a brain retraining program but that you should be exploring doing anti-vigilance brain work, which can be somatic tracking, somatic meditation, meditation, emotional freedom tapping. There's all sorts of options. A really good sign that you need to be doing this is that if you can't meditate for 10 minutes without stopping or getting sidetracked, I think a very good sign you need to be doing this is if when you reach for your pacifier, for many of us, that's our phone, but I guess theoretically it could be something else for someone else. But a good sign is when you reach for the thing, when you reach for the thing that pacifies you, kind of puts you at ease or is at your, at your new 
uh, your new sense of neutral, which isn't necessarily neutral, right? Again, like the coming down from heroin, you know, you find lesser evils. Um, we may have thought, we may have convinced ourselves that like, oh, I'm, I know I'm relaxing, uh, outside in a chair and I'm on my phone and I'm scrolling and we, we may have convinced ourselves that that's the new neutral, a very good sign that you need to be doing this work. There are many, many, many of these, but these are such important ones to be talking about or to be discussing and being cognizant of is next time you have that urge to grab your phone. I think particularly if your phone like dies or something and you plug it in and it turns on, pay attention to the next time where you go, okay, I need my phone. And instead of grabbing your phone, don't grab your phone. And see, start to pay attention to how frustrating that process is. And I mean, and I'm, I'm making, and I'm grimacing and I'm emphasizing that word for a reason. Start to pay attention to how sort of jaws, jaws of life energy, how much jaws of life energy you need to put into that transaction to stop yourself from picking up the phone. If it feels like you're literally being arm wrestled, like you're arm wrestling against your brain, you need to do some form of vigilance work with your brain. And th this is something, so there's a lot of back and forth between mold avoiders and brain retrainers, which I feel like they both should be learning from each other. And really what it is, is that there are diff people need to be doing different ratios of some avoidance, maybe for someone it's just to a better house or a better apartment. Um, for other people, maybe they're drawn to a more extreme situation or they genuinely need to be doing a more extreme situation of avoidance. But I feel it's different ratios of avoidance, brain retraining, mineral balancing, maybe parasite cleansing, a paleo diet with pristine foods or the clean 15 incorporated in that. Good relationship with sunlight and sleep. Um, and just a, a general detox protocol for a while. I believe that different people dealing with toxicity injuries and that, that tend to perpetuate, I think maybe always, a limbic system injury because I think something about toxicity flips on, it flips the limbic system into the on position. And it's like wrestling in a crocodile to get it to go back. And it takes, can take years of work to get it to go back. So for people who are just like, how is it possible that both of these things can solve the same illness? How is it possible these are the same illnesses? Just ask yourself, how hard is it for you to sit for 10 minutes without getting distracted? How hard is it for you when you reach for your pacifier to go, no, I'm not gonna do that and feel what it feels like in your brain what is the brain doing how how aggressive is the brain fighting back against you that is a limbic system on overdrive and you owe it to yourself you owe it to yourself on every level to make sure that that's exactly where it needs to be before you uproot your entire life and avoid uh, super toxins in the environment so just one man's perspective, but I think that this is really, really important and um, I hope it's valuable. And also I'm not trying to be controversial or rub up against anyone in a negative way. I actually just like, the pendulum kind of just swung back to brain retraining for me because as much as I, I, I do want to go to more pristine locations, I am drawn to that path. I need to give myself the best possible chance at not being poisoned by outdoor air because my body is in a state of hypervigilance. And that might not be how other people identify with it, but I, to those people I would say, can you sit still for 10 minutes? What happens when you tell yourself, I'm not gonna pick up my phone? What happens? If you feel an arm muscle with your brain, that's the limbic system. Okay, and I also posted uh, Bria's DNRS video on my like community posts and it's I think it's a really good brain retraining tool to watch that video um, Okay, hope this is helpful and again, I am very taken with extreme mold avoidance and brain retraining, but I think 
like from a liability standpoint, particularly as a woman um, who's going to be doing mold avoidance alone, which, which is absolutely dangerous um, and could be life destroying considering the cost and um, not being not being able to work functionally yet uh, I have to be able to give myself the best possible chance and if I can't sit for 10 minutes comfortably and I can't resist my pacifier with that much like acrimoniousness I don't know if that's the right what right term then there's more work to be done